Uh, good evening. My name is Basim Turvangani, founder and CEO of Ogier Corp. Ogier means to improve, and that's what we intend to do for Canada's clean tech energy production space by pro bringing hydroelectric power to the sea. Currently, the world is in a climate crisis, largely due to our reliance on fossil fuels. And if we want to reach our climate goals, we're going to have to improve on, exi on existing technology. Our contribution to this is tidal power. Currently, the tidal power is in its infancy, with only a few projects worldwide. However, we have a patentable nanotechnology IP we can use to protect our turbines from the brine and produce electricity from the sea. The opportunity to power Canada uh, using only its coast is very real. For instance, a combined 33 kilometers worth of tidal, tidal turbines could produce enough electricity to power all of Toronto. Our tidal project has similar costs to other hydroelectric projects, with the upside of scalability and being able to provide power where it's needed most, resulting in a solution that is both cost intelligent while also fuelless. The market we could potentially capture is 460 billion, but realistically we're going to capture 10 million with an initial 20 megawatt pilot installation, with revenue being produced through uh, a provincial transmission company. Our two-year action plan sees us validating IP via university before finalizing our patent application and then constructing a prototype turbine in early 2023. Our team is made up currently of five talented founders with their expertise in mathematics, engineering, physics, and accounting. In summary, Ogier seeks to improve Canada's clean tech energy production space by expanding the applications of hydrokinetic energy to the sea, providing sustainable and reliable power. Overall, our meeting with the three pillars of business saw us get good reviews, and going forward, we incorporate the feedback we received into our business plan and keep our momentum. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation, Blessing. Uh, I was just wondering, tidal power seemed from your presentation like a great idea. Why hasn't it taken off historically? What, what's holding it back? Uh, the corrosion from uh, the brine environment uh, is currently what's holding it back. However, with uh, recent uh, advances in nanotechnology, we can dope materials and apply substrates and uh, coatings under them. For instance, a very good uh, anti-corrosive material is uh, graphene, which was uh, discovered in 2004, so it's a recent innovation, and uh, it got the uh, Nobel Prize in Physics in 2010, so, yeah. And is your approach graphene-based? Uh, no, uh, we can't tell you what it is at the moment, <laughs> no. I like that answer, we can't tell you what it is. So you have a bit of a journey ahead of you. You were saying mm -hmm. securing your IP is a big part of it, which mm -hmm. is obviously why if you told us you'd have to kill us. So <laughs> I'm just curious about what, how close to being able to apply for the patents or where you're at in that journey. Uh, currently we have a provisional patent being done uh, by a law firm that we've contacted. Uh, we've been trying to shop around to see where we can get the best deal. Um, but yeah, we're well on our way to that. Um, patent application, a provisional one first. Um, I'm curious about the, the scale of, of, of what, you're, what you're talking about. Um, I mean, if you were to, to manufacture something that could produce 20 megawatts, you know, how big are we talking about? Uh, that would be about six turbines in total. Uh, nowhere near what I was talking about with uh, powering all of Toronto. <laughs> uh, but Eventually, we'll want to get there. First, we want to prove that this technology works and that we can handle it and uh, actually do what we say we're going to do and then go from there. The idea of turbines in the oceans, uh, what's the impact on the marine ecosystem? Uh, um, it's good that you asked that. Uh, well, we'll be using uh, mostly uh, uh, ion, like um, naturally occurring minerals, like uh, you know, graphene is made from carbon. Carbon naturally occurs into uh, in the environment, so runoff from that um, isn't harmful. So we'll be using similar elements uh, for our coatings. So it, it, the uh, impact won't be very large, and we intend to uh, use a very special design um, for our turbines so that fish can't get into it. So it'll have minimal impact on the environment at large. This is such a big idea. 
I, I love it. Um, what do you think will happen with the all of the plants that potentially, like if your test phase works and we're in the biggest form of what this could become, um, do you own all of those and sell the, the hydro back or do you um, partner with or what's, the, what's your path? Um, we're looking at a very agile approach. Um, we want to say that we're going to go all the way with it, produce the turbines ourselves, use the coatings ourselves. But uh, in reality, if it's um, more beneficial to just sell our coating um, and license it out, we'll do that. If it's better to produce the turbines ourselves and coat them and then sell them off to a third party, we'll do that. Uh, we're in a very early stage of our business, so we're looking to be as agile as possible to yeah. Uh, and then how do you see sort of that decision tree of, dis of deciding as you go forward? Um, basically, it will depend um, largely on, um, on uh, how, like, largely it will depend on how quickly we can get to market. If we can get to market faster by doing it ourselves, we'll do that. However, if there is demand for our turbines, but it will take us longer to actually provide to produce a plant, we'd rather just sell the turbines ourselves to a third party and allow them to use any existing facilities they have. Given what you've just talked about, I mean, and the fact that you're really at the stage of, of getting your IP um, protected, how long realistically do you think before you have, you know, a working prototype that's ready for sale in the marketplace? Uh, a working prototype, because uh, because the idea is already fully formed and we're already, and like I said during my presentation, we're only going to be improving on our existing hydroelectric concepts. If we, once we protect our idea, if we begin, um, like I said in my presentation, early 2023, I estimate we'll be ready to, we'll have a working prototype by uh, maybe May, or halfway through the year, around there, summer, Q2. Um, if I can ask a follow-up question, if I understand correctly, and I have no knowledge in this area whatsoever, but, but the strength of the tidal current can vary a great deal from uh, one location to another. Uh, yeah, we, I actually have uh, slides concern, or you, yeah, yeah. concerning that. Um, basically, what we're aiming to work with right now is uh, this is a, a revenue, expected revenue projection for uh, 0.4 meters per second currents. Um, but we've uh, looked at Canada's coast, we've seen that the most common ones are about 0.4 meters per second, uh, the second most common is 0.6 meters per second, and uh, the least common is one meter per second currents. And we've uh, made projections for all of those and plans for all of those. Um, but initially we want to start with uh, the slowest current. And uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat your question? <laughs> I, well, given that, I mean, I, I think that answers my question to a large extent, but the reasoning behind my question was, I've heard of experiments with tidal power generation where the current was so strong that, you know, the machinery is essentially torn apart and they had to go back and, and start over. So it looks as though you've addressed that. Um, and do you, are you aware of, for example, what locations would be a good place to start? Uh, absolutely. Uh, right now we were looking um, off the coast of Nova, Co Nova Scotia and at the mouth of uh, the Hudson's Bay. And um, we have yet to select um, any uh, potential locations over in Vancouver because we want to, the, our goal is to try and encompass all of Canada, all around. Um, but yeah, we have identified some locations that we want to work with. Are you seasonally affected by water temperature or any of those, are those considerations for how the technology works? Uh, no, we'll be piggybacking off of um, channels that run pretty much year round, uh, so yeah. Have you um, had any investigation into the regulatory aspects of this? Um, absolutely. Um, well, um, in order to sell uh, power in Canada, you have to work with the transmission companies of each um, province because um, transmission is nationalized in Canada. So uh, the government controls it, and you would be working under a contract if we were to go and uh, build these facilities ourselves. 
Um, however, if we were, again, we were trying to be agile, if we were to sell this to a third party, there wouldn't be much uh, regulation other than an inspection of the turbines themselves to see that they work and also do not cause environmental damage. Um, this, is, this has really been a fascinating presentation. Um, I, I think the, so I'm curious, okay, you have, have the, um, the turbines in the water. Are there logical places to link it back into the grid that, that already exist, or are you having to build that infrastructure as well? Um, yeah, there are places to uh, link it back to the grid. Uh, there's a lot of um, coastal towns that we can link to, and if um, the feed-in tariff that uh, you pay to connect to the grid also covers things like our extra connections. So uh, largely, the government would handle us um, going into feeding, uh, connecting to the grid once we've been uh, verified. That is. Blessing, I really appreciate the presentation. You did a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you.